Assalamu alaikum my name is Alish Patarik and we are going to present our final project of philosophy and critical thinking submitted by group 9 and submitted to sir raja israr our group members are junaid sultan myself alish patarik sayed uzair naki wajiha khan qazi salman alam mohammad ahmed khatak and arbaz khan Said Ahmad Shah, Nurul Huda, and Sadia Irfan. Our question is: What kind of intellectual resources are provided by philosophy, which are indispensable for success in contemporary global environment? What are intellectual resources? The resources which are in non-physical and intangible form. The good example of these resources are IP, copyrights, and even if you are doing a business. in a partnership then that partnership also comes in intellectual resources customer list customer knowledge also come in intellectual resources intellectual resources are very high in time taking and very much expensive to develop but once they got built up the company business get much of major advantages in the game of business sony nike google Adobe, iPhone, and Samsung. These are the perfect examples of your intellectual property. What is philosophy? Philosophy is a process or a activity of thinking or getting thought. Philosophy is analytical and bold thought. It is the most wide and analytical way of thinking a human has come up with. The intellectual process contains both and. analytic and synthetic means unnatural method of operation by studying philosophy we can improve our reasoning and critical skills the skills we gain from philosophy are very much useful everywhere in life moreover by studying philosophy we can think more logically easily analyze and solve our problems philosophy provide benefits to students intellectually spiritually and morally they learn that there is remarkable spiritual and intellectual connection between themselves and people of different ages and places student learns how to question well and might begin to develop responses philosophy takes on some of the biggest questions that have ever been asked and learn how to evaluate them Philosophy teaches the critical thinking which are long lasting and exposes students to great debates. We can say that philosophy is correlated with financial and professional success. By studying philosophy, the person can easily evaluate and draw useful conclusion of the situation. He or she learns how to assert opinions and ideas in an organized matters. Having an idea is not a big deal, but there should be a systematic way to express that idea which can be done by studying philosophy. Moreover, the person is then able to make judgments based on ethics and morality. The study of philosophy can be truly enriching, a highly gratifying, and it's lifelong learning and enhanced intellectual, political, and social existence. it can help you to live better by helping you to understand yourself as a thinking my topic is intellectual curiosity additionally called epistemic interest is curiosity that accomplishment of genuine information it can comprise of curiosity in such thing as what article are made of the first component of framework numerical connection dialectic accepted practices and history it tend to be separated from another kind of curiosity that does that doesn't prompt accomplishment of genuine information like interest in nearby insider facts of other it is a it is a feature of a candor or uh, to encounter in the overall information five factors model used to depict human character furthermore Furthermore human appear to be brought in the world with intellectual curiosity yet relying upon how guardian react to in- inquiries from their kids intellectual curiosity may be expanded or diminished guardians that consi- uh, consistently respond adversely to questions asked asked by their youngsters are deterring them from posing inquiries and that is probably going to make them less inquisitive then again guardians are 
guardians that consistently responding decidedly to questions asked by their youngsters are urging them to pose inquiries and that is probably going to intrigue them more. Their psyche are consistently dynamic. We can say that brain is very much like muscle. It gets more grounded through normal exercise. The ordinary exercise is posing positive inquiries and reaction from the person. There is a book about how to substitute intellectual curiosity and affection from information in kids. Assalamu alaikum, myself Chunay Sultan. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of introduction on uh, intellectual resources and its importance in contemporary environment uh, before we going into detailed view about intellectual resources and its importance. Um, first of all, interdisciplinary programs. Uh, interdisciplinary programs are getting offered at universities and colleges level like they are so much popular nowadays in the world like uh, fine arts programs which are very helpful in sense of stylizing. Uh, history of ancient philosophy courses uh, can also be helpful in classics programs. Uh, European study uh, if we talk about uh, European studies, uh, European study programs can also be very helpful in medieval and modern philosophy. Uh, philosophy is one of the main who which plays a very important role in such kind of interdisciplinary programs. And uh, now many philosophers are investing their skill in these areas. Um, on many institutes, philosophy has already took a, a very important place uh, where such kind of programs are have been performing. Uh, philosophy played a much important role in the feminist theory and now have a place in both uh, women's and uh, sexuality studies programs. Uh, philosophy has played a very unique role in cognitive science, has been done by philosophers. Some other programs like uh, women gender studies, sexuality study, cognitive studies, uh, international studies, environmental studies etc. and many more. Uh, after philosophy gaining a lot uh, knowledge in political and uh, social philosophy, they have gotten a lot of atten attention in recent time by developing or making theories uh, of human rights. In this uh, slide, I am going to discuss a little bit of uh, environmental philosophy or environmental study. Um, if we uh, talk about you know, environmental philosophy and uh, environmental ethics, these are the main uh, of environmental studies. Uh, other more philosophy science courses can be valuable to a program in science and technology. Uh, studies of law and study justice etc. includes in it too. Sustainability uh, study will be enhanced by courses in the philosophy of environmental science and environmental ethics. Um, all these intellectual property uh, resources are much important to circulate the contemporary environment in a well manner way. Uh, these are very essential to lead, lead the life on this planet and these are the basic parts of our life. Asalaamu Alaikum. My name is Kazi Salman and topic of my presentation is Environmental Philosophy. Environmental Philosophy deals with the natural environment and moral relationships of human with it. Environmental philosophy requires us to develop wisdom about our environment, which means what is best for our environment with respect to our own actions in the environment. Philosophy believes that humans are the most important species on this earth. Philosophy are closely related to human and also to their environment. Many philosophers believe that human beings have ability to change their environment to suit their purposes. It is an orderly environment where human persons thrive best. Disorders give rise to several problems and challenges for humankind. Philosophy helps to keep us wondering and to remind us about what we don't know. The, the care of the earth is our most ancient and most worthy and after all our most playing responsibility to cherish what remains of it and to foster its renewal is our only hope.
My name is Nurul Huda and my topic is Philosophy of Education. The philosophy of uh, education is that branch of philosophy that deals with philosophical questions concerning engineering, goals and problems of education. As a branch of practical philosophy, its staff members look within the parental guidance of philosophy and outside of academic practices as well as in development psychology, general science, sociology and other relevant fields. Your educational philosophy or your beliefs about why, what you teach and how you teach, who you teach and what you learn. It is a set of principles that guide professional action in the events and issues that teachers face on a daily basis. The source of your educational philosophy are your experience in life, your values, your environment, your communication with others and your appreciation of philosophical methods. Learning about the branches of philosophy, worldview philosophy, and various educational philosophy and ideas. They will help you determine and build your academic philosophy including these other aspects. So now this is about role. Philosophy of education plays a vital role in guiding education. Education philosophy is actually a way of approaching education experience rather in a body of apology. The philosophical approach is very important in Rogan. The philosophy promoted by a particular school and its official influences, the goals and objectives of the school. What are the aims and functions of philosophy of education? Personal injustice, extensive identification and adjustment of global wing, leading in the development of the comprehensive concept and reality of education, identify and clarity the comprehensive curriculum. The goals of educational philosophy are embedded in the development of personal history. Most modern and modern educational philosophers in the East and West embarrass the purpose of educational philosophy as a well, human development. Each round development consists of all aspects, physical, mental, moral, social, emotional, and spiritual. Thank you. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Arbaz Khan and I am here to present uh, Economic Theory of Intellectual Property. Economic theory plays a role in creating markets and information. This theory is important for a source to ignore in a philosophical uh, treatment of intellectual property. Intellectual property have the right to play a role either positive or negative on economic growth and development. Affecting the growth of intellectual property, it may affect the economic growth in an important way. In many countries, it is whether stricter enforcement of intellectual property's laws uh, for good economic growth. The intellectual property protection is remarkable for economic growth. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sadia Irfan. I discuss the topic global business environment. Now let's start. Information. The global business environment can be defined as the environment in which independent countries with complex except to the domestic environment of the organization. So basically, the it developed in a fundamental way as a result of the many forces that shape the nature and the power of the global trade, or it influenced decision making on the use of resources and the skills. The state of the global business can be divided into external and the internal environment too. Okay, then move to the next. Next is the uh, uh, global forces. So these are the global forces include global. Uh, economic power basically global economic power is the ability of countries business or individual standard of living other one is technological power technological power is used to help all the user of uh, technological like uh, software freedom etc other one is international competition uh, international competition is the process like uh, higher level of competition and achieve uh, at different level so last one is legal or political uh, legal is connected of the law and uh, the political is basically the power relation between individuals such as the distribution of resources or states okay then move to the next slides it's a effect of global force in business environment the global forces affect business around the world uh, they affect your business like a salaries employees expectations um, management and the uh, availability of raw material etc 
so the global business transaction uh, will definitely affect it you here the some factor include with affects business environment or uh, environment feature human traits economic features etc these are the some factors that affect our business environment banking on intellectual property it could be argued that the traditional way of doing business has resisted technology for years this is now changing the physical storage of data on business premises physical attendance or signing of transactional documentational as well as document verification were often considered to be barrier by central banks which would be said that to the evolution of technology in financial services today however the choice is influenced by user friendly app and quicker access the exploitation of intellectual property rights by financial institution has expanded from the mild branding of slogans names and color to the development of software and investment in tech for this reason financial institution are increasingly looking to strike a balance between anti money laundering know your customer regulations and the offering of smart service with a minimal operational cost financial institution also need to secure their intellectual property rights in order to protect their investment and brand these changes have encouraged many banks to rebrand and move away from their traditional long names to adopt smarter and cashier trademarks while continuing to serve the brand promise and purpose the brick and mortar model of banking growth has done away with the evolution of technology and utilization of intellectual property backed startup while in house counsel is traditionally required to have banking and corporate experience the need of specialist intellectual property expert have become an important part of any bank system and process going forward general critics of intellectual property The term intellectual property has been criticized on the grounds that the rights conferred by exclusive rights laws are in some ways more limited than the legal rights associated with property interest in physical goods, titles or lands or real property. Putting aside the strand of argument that seek to justify moral claims of intangible works and the rather focused problems with these views, these are for, uh, several general critics of the rights to control intellectual property to consider. Information is not property. Critics argue that information is not the kind of thing that can be owned or possessed and is not something that can be property as that notion is typically defined information objects are abstract objects which cannot casually interact with material objects and hence cannot be owned or possessed this analysis is vulnerable to at least two objections first it is not clear that ownership as a conceptual matter requires physical possession one can argue that the essence of ownership consists in a power and not in physical control or possession of the entity Second, the claim that information objects cannot be property does not imply that it is illegit- illegitimate to grant to authors or content creators. 
a legal right to exclude others from appropriating those objects without their consent. Information wants to be free. Barlow 1997 argues that information is entitled to moral consideration in value of being alive. On his view, information is a form of life with a claim to be free that is grounded in interest and wants of its own. As he puts the point, information objects are life forms in every respect but a basis in the carbon atom. They self-reproduce, they interact with their surroundings and adapt to them, they mutate, they persist. Further, these living information objects have some sort of interest in being made available to everyone free of charge. Certainly, the claim that being made freely available to all somehow benefits information objects needs an argument if for no other reason that it is counter-initiative. The Social Nature of Information Argument According to this view, information is a social product and enforce, enforcing access restriction benefits authors and inventors. Individuals are raised in societies that provide them with knowledge which these individuals then use it to create intellectual works of all kinds. On his view, the building blocks of intellectual works knowledge is a social product, allowing rights and intellectual works would be similar to granting ownership of the individual who placed the last brick up of public works dam. Hope you will like our presentation. Thank you for watching.